Hello there, my name is Jay. I'm one of the super duper expert teachers here at E2 Language, where you should go to prepare for your OET test. I highly recommend it. Today, we're going to look at a listening part A. Let's just get stuck into it and have a look at the question itself. So your test paper will look something like this. You can probably imagine what you have to do. You're going to listen to a consultation between a medical professional and a patient. The medical professional might be a doctor, a one of another crazy profession, or a dentist or something like that. And they're gonna have a discussion and you're going to be listening for what the patient says and you're going to be taking the word or the short phrase that the patient says and putting it into one of these gaps, okay? Now, before the audio begins, you get 30 seconds to look, and during this time, you should be predicting what type of word you're going to see. So let's take a look here. All right, let's do a little bit of prediction. Says, initial pain came from, hmm, a place perhaps? Something like that. Uh, initially thought pain was a result of, well, it's gonna be hard to predict, had increased consumption, something you eat perhaps, we'll go there, compared the pain to an, look at this, an. So this is gonna be a noun, and it's gonna start with a vowel sound, periodically unable to verb, maybe. Wife provided massage and something else related to massage. Exacerbated pain on a, Okay, given something to ease inflammation, probably a medication, I'm guessing. GP friend declined prescription of something here and suggested strengthening something here. Anyway, here's 30 seconds for you to look at it. Okay, you ready? The audio will begin now. Hello there, Jack. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I've seen better days. Indeed. So, I understand you've been having a bit of lower back pain. Can you tell me a bit about it? Sure. Uh, I guess it started about six weeks ago, actually. Quite a long time. I can't remember any real cause to it. It just seemed to appear out of nowhere. It was strange. I'm really fit, you see, and because there was no injury involved, I just kind of ignored it. But then it came back, and I thought it might be something to do with my diet. Around that time, I was experimenting with eating more protein to try and get a bit more muscly. I see. Can you tell me more about the pain? Certainly. So the pain initially wasn't too bad, and that's probably part of the reason why I left it so long. But after a few weeks, it got worse. It started sort of pulsing up and down my leg, which was really strange. It kind of felt like an electric shock. Some mornings I'd wake up and couldn't get out of bed, it was that bad. Uh, my wife, who's a naturopath, was helpful. She would give me a massage, which helped, and also a bit of dry needling as well. That was helpful? Yeah, it gave me a bit of reprieve, but usually not for too long. Actually, it got even worse about three weeks ago. This is a bit embarrassing, actually. But I went with my niece to a swimming pool and went down the water slide and sort of twisted, I guess, and that really made it worse. Oh, dear. Yeah, honestly, I regret having done that. And have you taken any medication for the pain or sought any other treatments? Uh, as I mentioned, my wife practices natural medicine, so she gave me some different tonics to help with the inflammation. But to be honest, they didn't help much at all. So I actually went and saw one of my friends who's a GP, but he refused to prescribe me any painkillers. I guess he wanted me to get to the root of the problem. He actually said I should join a gym and build up my core. I've uh, been a bit lazy with that though, and hence I've come to see you. I'm hoping you'll be able to help me out. Okay, how did you go listening to that? Were you able to fill all of those gaps and how confident are you with the words or the phrases that you chose? Admittedly, this one was pretty easy. Now, if you are taking the OET test, even if you've taken it before and been unsuccessful, or if you've never taken the OET test before and you have no idea what's gonna happen, or even a 
bit of an idea, then you should check out our mini mock test with feedback. This is a really good tool, and this really should be your starting point for your OET preparation, even if your English is excellent, okay? The reason is you wanna get feedback before test day, especially feedback on your writing, and you also wanna have a simulation of a speaking mock test with an expert who will give you feedback, and that's exactly what this mock test does in addition to the reading and the listening. So check it out on e2language.com. Could save you lots of time and money. Okay, so let's go through these answers together. All right, so Jack said the initial pain came from nowhere, which is a bit of a strange word to say, and that's probably why they've put it in inverted commas here, came from nowhere. Initially, Jack thought the pain was a result of his diet, is fine here, because he had eaten more protein, is the word here. He compared the pain to an electric shock. Uh, he was periodically unable to get out of bed, uh, his wife pro provided him with dry needling. Uh, he hurt his back on a water slide. Uh, his wife gave him tonics. His friend, the GP, refused to give him painkillers and suggested that he strengthen his core. So, what score... Whoops, that's an 11. What score did you get out of 10? Please pop it into the chat below. By the way, if you are on YouTube, which you probably are, please click the subscribe button because we release really good OET preparation videos. But even better, if you're on YouTube, come across to e2language.com, sign up for free because you get a full practice test on E2. Okay, what we're going to do now is take a closer look at the transcript here and the question booklet and the answers. And we're going to find the relationship between what Jack says and what the medical professional says and what is written in that question booklet and why the answer is the way it is. Okay, let's go through this. Let's start with number one. So, uh, okay, so says initial pain came from nowhere. So if we look into the uh, transcript here, Jack says, it just seemed to appear out of nowhere. It just seemed to appear out of nowhere. It says initial pain came from nowhere. You can see the relationship there. What about number two? Well, Jack says here, I thought it might be something to do with my diet. So initially thought pain was a result of diet. You can see how these are saying the same thing, but just using different words there. And that's the key word that you're going to use to fill that little blank there. Number three, had increased consumption of protein. Jack says here, uh, around that time I was experimenting with eating more protein, okay? Increased consumption, eating more. There's the paraphrase or the synonym. And really that's what's happening here. In the question booklet, You've got the transcript of what they're saying, and in the question booklet, it's not going to say the exact same thing around the gap. It's going to be using a paraphrase or synonymous language, similar language, different words that mean the same thing, okay? So you have to be sort of clever to hear, okay, um, eating more, increased consumption. They mean the same thing. That's the key to this one. Number four, he compared the pain to an electric shock. So there's quite a bit of discussion here, and then he said it kind of felt like an electric shock, compared the pain to an electric shock. Periodically unable to get out of bed. Some mornings I'd wake up and couldn't get out of bed. Some mornings, periodically, okay? Wife provided massage and dry needling. My wife, who's a naturopath, da 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 and also a bit of dry needling. Now, a good thing about listening part A is if you spell a word incorrectly, like needling, for example, let's say you spell it wrong, doesn't matter. You will get it correct as long as the examiners actually know what it was that you were trying to say and it was the same word. So that's good news. Okay, number seven. Okay, then da, 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 da. this is a bit embarrassing. I went with my niece to a swimming pool. Maybe you thought it was swimming pool, but exacerbated pain on a swimming pool would not make sense because you're not on a swimming pool. In a swimming pool would make sense, but you are on a water slide, went down the water slide, okay? So that's the correct word there. Next one, tonics. 
So, as I mentioned, my wife practices natural medicine. She gave me some different tonics. So that was there. By the way, if we look here, we can see a change of topic here, treatment medication. So if we go back to the doctor, the doctor, or sorry, the physio, the physio said, and have you taken any medication for the pain or sought any other treatments? So you can see how this is the change of topic here, okay? Okay, so then he's talking about his GP friend who refused to prescribe me any painkillers. GP friend declined, refused, prescription of. Painkillers is the key word there. And it should be killers. Try to get the plurals right. Final one is core. Um, he said, should I, I should join a gym or suggested and build up my core and strengthening core. Build up, strengthen, that is the synonym there. So you can see there's quite a bit going on with listening part A, but listening part A is the simplest part of the listening test. You really should be aiming to get, there are 24 questions in listening part A in the real exam. The first one has 12, you'll hear a conversation, 12 questions between say a physio and a patient, and then an entirely different conversation between say a dentist and a patient. 12 questions, 12 questions, aim for 24, Prepare properly on e2language.com. I'll see you soon.